right into it. If you need some time I, to gather yourself go. or let's anything. Go. I'm Sterling from the Heart of the Heroes podcast. Uh, Olivia, thank you so much for coming out to this con, letting me, you know, grill you with all these really hard questions. Hard questions. Okay. Yes. Don't ask me too many hard questions because I don't know everything. Uh, well, <laughs> I feel like you probably know a lot. Okay. So. We'll see. Uh, especially with all the stuff you've done, you know, uh, when I started researching a, a lot of your career and what you've done was really cool. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so, first off, I want to tell you, uh, I'm a big Hey Arnold fan, and that was super I'm cool. I'm a big Hey Arnold fan, so I that works. That was so cool <laughs> that you got to be the voice of that, and I wanted to know if you wanted to talk a little bit about that. Sure. Um, There's nothing off limits. I just, if you start going deep into Avatar, you know. Like lure? I might not know everything. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. That's totally fine. That's totally fine. Okay. I just more of like, um, what I wanted to ask about, hey, Arnold, with that voice, did you, because uh, I've interviewed a couple other uh, voice actors, where did you pull that voice from? So, when we started doing um, Hey Arnold, I was 12 which is crazy. Um, so they really just wanted like natural kids' voices. And up until that show, really, um, look at all these little puppets back there. They're so um, cute, sorry. <laughs> no, that's, I didn't even cute? notice them until okay. you said that. Um, well, they're all just staring at me, so I had to acknowledge <laughs> it. Um, up until that time, really the only, one of the only um, cartoons that had used kids was like Peanuts and Charlie Brown and all that stuff. Um, because they have to hire teachers and there's like labor laws and all this stuff. So it was really unique and cool um, that it was all kids and they really just wanted everybody in their natural register, you know, oh, because okay. we're all just playing kids. Mm -hmm. um, so that was just neat. Uh, and especially to be with a whole cast of kids and do that and kind of play around. Well, yeah, and it was probably, you know, like you guys were just living your life kind of in, you know, because you're all a bunch of kids just hanging out yeah, having fun, yeah. I'm guessing. That's and so it kind of keeps that whole little rapport going, and I don't know, I, it gives it like a certain quality to the show that feels like organic. Mm -hmm. I don't know more. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So that's neat. That's really cool. Um, I did want to ask, so in when you were real young, you were in acting. Yes. Which I'm still in acting. Voice well, acting is acting. Well, no, but I'm, I'm saying... Just hard time. Oh, I'm just giving you a hard time. I was like, you know what, I give up. <laughs> I'm just going to walk out. I totally messed up. No, so, like, being in front of the camera, yeah. how was that uh, fun... Trans was it fun transitioning behind? Because a lot of people that I've interviewed said that they kind of like it. They throw, come in and sweat, yeah. a t-shirt, yeah. hairs up, it's and they're the like... Best. Yeah, yeah. And it's a different kind of, like skill set in a way, um, I think there's a lot of, like sometimes people think like when you're doing voice acting that it's, they go, oh, you know, I could do a million voices, I want to be a voice actor, and it's like, well, you still have to be able to act, right, like there's still emotion and all that stuff, but what's nice about voice acting is A, you don't have to remember lines, love that, <laughs> uh, and B, like when you're doing on camera acting, there's a lot of like, you have to hit a certain mark, right? and you have to hit it just the right way so that that light right there, you know, hits you. Hit you. And you have to make sure that you pour that glass of water at, on the same line every time for continuity so they can edit it and whatever. So there's a lot of stuff that takes you out of acting in a way when you're doing um, on-camera stuff that with voice you can kind of just really focus and like zero in on it in a different way. Does that make sense? No, it okay. definitely makes sense. <laughs> I would, uh, you know, that inside of uh, you know, like hitting that same mark. I never really thought of that. I don't think of that. You know, if you're like every time, it's got to be perfect. Totally. You're always looking in the same way. And, yeah, yeah. Because that makes it easier. Yeah, there's that. a lot of different things that, you know, technical things sometimes. Oh, like, yeah. look, there's some scenes where you're just like sitting on a witness stand. Those are great, right? Because you're mm -hmm. sitting down, yeah. you're there, there's nothing else going on, right? Mm -hmm. But if there's any sort of movement or walking and all that, it, get, it can get complicated, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so I did see that you were on Family Guy yeah. for one yeah. episode. How like was that? Yeah. Uh, it's great. Um, weirdly, like the residuals from Family Guy are better than like anything else because they still run it. Like, yeah, like syndication all the time. Forever and ever. Um, no, Family Guy is super cool. Seth is fun. Um, and originally, I did some incidental voices for that show. But like how the first episode I did, I think, was for um, 
they just had a Cindy Brady part, so they just wanted oh, Cindy nice. Brady to come in. It's like, all right. You're like, I've done this. Let's uh, do that. You know, so many times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That is cool. Because yeah. that's a very, uh, like, iconic show that's still, you yeah. know what I mean? No, it's very, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. This what is else is in the uh, book? This on? one I'm really excited about. I kind of thought this was, might be your favorite question. So. Okay. When you were younger, you is, did a McDonald's sick. commercial. I did like 10 McDonald's commercials. So did you get free french yeah. fries for life? No. Or what's going okay. on here? Okay, you know? so my McDonald's commercials, which I think if you Google like Olivia Hack McDonald's, like they'll all pop up. Uh -huh. Okay. It was for this test market on the East Coast where they were going to do Italian food. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's like pizza pasta, like meatballs, fettuccine alfredo, like the whole thing. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, it's super bizarre, right? And I think the only thing that they ended up doing kind of, not globally or anything, but uh, was the pizza. And there was like some big thing where, now we're just getting into McDonald's, but like they made all the franchises put in these big windows so that the pizza boxes could fit through and like, they had to like pay for these upgrades, and then like a year later, they're like, "We're not doing pizza anymore," we're and all the owners it. were like super mad. Yeah, but but I did. A t I was the spokesperson for McDonald's Italian food. Yes. How did you know that? Well, you know, okay. I gotta do some digging. You're doing to some see research. I, okay. That that's is, what wait, I, you're right. That is my favorite question. Yeah. <laughs> no one's ever asked me that before. I really try to like uh, not do the same questions over yeah. and over. No, no, that's good. That's that's like we're inside the actor's studio right okay, now. Okay, good. Because uh, I was really uh, kind of hoping that would get a get a pop. Oh yeah. Being like, I'm into it. Um, <laughs> Another show, and uh, well, I'm sorry, people, but these are definitely more Let's go. Uh, for me. Let's go for was it. you got to be on a great show called Freaks and Geeks? Oh yeah, yeah that is yeah, such, nice. which such a good show. Yeah, it was. Yeah. a huge cult classic. Uh, so many, you know, big name people have been on that show, yeah. and I just kind of want to know what it was like, what the vibe was like. And, it was awesome. Um, the it's funny because. So many people have watched that show later, mm -hmm. and occasionally, like, I'll get a phone call from somebody that I know that's like, I'm binge watching Freaks and Geeks. I didn't know you were on that because it's everybody watches it at some point. It's really yeah. good. Um, my episode was weird because so I was like a, a mathlete, mm -hmm. and so there were like three girls, and then there was like the head mathlete girl, and she got the head mathlete chick got sick like day two of filming, like, really sick, like, food poison. Like, she showed up and she was like, Ray. And I think they even talk about this if when you watch the um, wow. director's cut yeah. or what is it, the commentary. Yeah. Um, and uh, she was like, gray. And they were like, oh my God, what are we going to do? So people panicked. And they ended up like calling some other actress like that hour and like throwing her on set oh, wow. and whatever. And so you would never know this if whatever but it's like the old actress is still in a couple scenes in the background they were able to kind of edit around it and throw this new chick in there um but everybody complained about that episode because the girl that they put in was really beautiful and freaks and geeks had a really good way of like casting normal looking people yeah definitely. and so people were like why is this chick so pretty it doesn't it's like because they had to get her like yeah. a half an hour before she went on set so cool. um but no it was a great experience it was super fun and the outfits were great, and all the actors are were really awesome. And yeah, it was just a really good. I was very excited to be on that show because I already liked that show. Yeah, and it was yeah just a very cold classic. I mean, yeah. still to this day, everybody. Oh yeah, super lucky. Yeah, yeah. watches that show. Yeah, so that yeah. was something uh, I did want to ask. Now, being a part of uh, Star Wars and what's what you have done before you started doing voice acting for that were you a big star wars fan um i mean like anyone is you know like i wasn't psycho about it um well, no, 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 no 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 but i well i mean but i know i was definitely a star wars fan um and before i did that i was like you know what i'm gonna walk because i hadn't seen i'd seen clone wars uh -huh. And I'd, I'd seen the second one, but I hadn't seen, what's the third? Uh, uh, Revenge of the Sith? Yeah, Revenge of the Sith, which is actually the best one. Of, of the newer ones? I think so, Prequel. right? I love that you say that, the prequels, because that one's my favorite. Well, because oh. I like to see origin stories, right? Mm -hmm. So the fact oh. that you get to see um, what happens to, uh, okay, I've had a cold all week, so I'm not totally there. That's fine. That, okay. 
Um, <laughs> I was like, there's no judgment here. No, but I'm here. like, I can't come up with words. I'm like, why can't I remember the name of Darth Vader? Yeah. Okay. So the fact that you get to see Darth Vader's origin story, mm -hmm. I love that, right? Like, that's super cool. So anyway, so I watched all of them in a row. Um, because when you do Star Wars, the guy who directs it, uh, his name is Dave Filoni, mm -hmm. and um, and all the Star Wars fans know who this guy is. Yeah. And he wears this big cowboy hat, and he, he's awesome. Um, but when you get in there, he's like, I am the direct voice of George Lucas. I talk to him every day. You could ask me any question you want, and da 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 and so you're just sitting there like, oh my God, you know? Yeah, like, um, uh, and he has this encyclopedic knowledge of, like when they're giving you direction, they'll be like, okay, you remember this scene, it, you know, where he's doing this, uh, you know, in, in Return of the Jedi, and da 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 da, and he says to whatever, do it like that. And you're like, okay. Um, oh, wow. So they're, they're like deep, deep into it. And I guess George uh, will like sit him down in the screening room and show him, you know, some movie from 1945 and be like, I want the, you know, fight sequence to look like this or whatever. So they're really entwined and, it, and it's super cool. So it's a cool show to work on because you feel like you're, it's like very reverent. Like there's a lot of like respect for, and they know that the fans are going to pick apart everything. So they're very meticulous and it's cool. When I did um, Kira for Forces of Destiny, so when they did the audition, they were just like, should sound like Amelia Clark, right? And they don't tell you that it's a Star Wars thing that you're auditioning for. And typically, you know, you know, there's like a code word. Like it'll be like Project Black or like, you know, Unicorn Tears or whatever. They'll give it like Unicorn weird. Tears? No, they'll I just like, like give it like weird names, you know? Uh -huh. So you're like, maybe this is Star Wars or something. Um, so they were just like, should sound like Amelia Clark. So I just went in there and like did a Amelia Clark kind of version, but I wasn't whatever. So when I booked it, I was like, oh, okay, cool, it's Star Wars. And then when I got there, they were like, oh yeah, so it's this character, it is Amelia Clark. it's this. So for me, it's like, and I love that episode, it's super fun, but I'm like, oh, I could have done a better job because I didn't watch her or anything like that beforehand, you know? Like, you're, they're just like, okay, wing it. Um, but no, that's just like, uh, yeah, anytime I get to do anything Star Wars, it's super cool. Yeah, because there's a, you know, not just the huge fan base. It, it a lot of people, you know, they got to be in the movies or voice actors that I've watched interviews with. They're like, you know, you're part of something that's like bigger. Yeah, it's yeah. so big, and yeah. you know, it's like a huge honor. You it know, is being oh, a part totally of is. something like that. Yeah. So, and you know, you even hear about big movie stars that like want to just be in a oh, movie yeah. dressed as a stormtrooper. Oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah. sign me up. I did. No, no, it's a like super that. honor because they could get anyone. You know, so yeah. you're just like. No, it's great. It's really good. No, and it's really cool. You know, you're a, a strong female character and all that stuff, which is really fun totally. to see. So. Well, and I was bummed. So our arc on Clone Wars, so it's like, I don't know if you're familiar. So it's like four younglings, and like it was the first time that they show how lightsabers are made and this sort of thing. Um, so there's like a lot of like canon involved in it. Um, but that was supposed to be, was basically a pilot um, to make a youngling series. And I guess from what I've heard, like, it was done deal, like they had made a budget, like it was happening, and then Disney bought Star Wars. And Disney's thing was like, um, we're only going to make product that kind of fuels the movies, so we're not gonna like go off into something else. Um, so that was a bummer. Oh, that. Yeah, but it's still, cause it was, it would kind of skew younger, cause Clone Wars is really for an adult audience. You yeah. Know, kind of. Um, Same with yeah, like, uh, so Rebels and all that. Yeah, stuff. all that. And what's the new one that's coming out? Uh, Resistance? Yeah, Resistance. Resistance. Thank yeah, you. Okay, okay. Um, well, next one is Avatar. Okay. I'm gonna talk about that. So this guy, it's like, yeah, he's yeah. he's like ready for it. Yeah. Oh no, yeah. we're gonna get to <laughs> we're gonna get to everybody's okay. questions. Oh I just God. wanted to. I know yeah. nothing about Avatar. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm gonna try. I wanted to just jump okay, around. How was it. it? Like, that's another. Uh, well, big here's a weird thing. So okay, so when I did Avatar. I went in like, I think thinking it was like one episode of an anime or something. Like I did not know Avatar existed. And here was the weird thing, like they had, so when you do a animated show or whatever, you do the voice and then they animate to your voice, right? So you're not doing it to picture, you're not matching lips unless you're doing an anime, dubbing something. Um, but with Avatar, they had like already cast somebody for that part. 
because the first time I went in, I was overdubbing somebody's voice. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, and so I just thought, I was like, oh, this is some some anime or something, I don't know. Oh, wow. um, and then they kept calling me in, and then I was like, oh, okay, it's different. Yeah. Um, but I didn't know how big Avatar was. I, it's weird, like, with Hey Arnold to, um, I mean, when we did Avatar, like, obviously the internet was around, yeah. right? But not in its form that it is today, right? Yeah, so, so, like, you know people watch it, and you're like, well, we're doing, we keep doing seasons of this, so people must like it, but you don't know. And the first time I was in a, it was like eight or nine years ago, I was at a con in Australia. Australia, oh, wow. yeah, with Dante, who, does, who voices Zuko. Yeah. And, nice. yeah, and I was like, yeah. and we've done a few cons together, so I love Dante. I love Dante. Oh, 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 um, nice. But we were like, oh shit, like this is a thing. Like, people care about this oh, show. Yeah. Like, because nobody had said anything to me about it, I didn't know. Um, and the Avatar fans are the best fans because they are like ride or die. Oh, dude, yes, yeah. you are. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what do you great... think about this live action show? What's your I'm ex- what's your hard take? I'm excited about okay. it, but at the same time, I feel it, it can go both ways. But okay. the cartoon is so, so good. good, and I it's like it know, resonated with it so much. Are they remaking the cartoon live action, or are these new? Stories? Do we know? Do we know uh, what from it what is? I've heard, it's yeah. supposed to be kind of, but it's gonna be reimagined. That's what I've heard. Okay. Just reimagined, like probably like an eight episode thing, like not like. So uh, it's limited. Limited, but okay. it's like reimagining it. The show. Okay. I mean, the original creators are involved, so I'm okay with that. Just no M Night Shyamalan involved. No M Night yeah. Shyamalan. Okay. Just what do you think about that. it? What? No, I, I'm actually I'm with high hopes. Like I okay. think you know, the creators. Yeah. I think they're going to do such a great job. Okay, yeah. so the fact that the creators are involved, we're yes. feeling it. And that's, okay. Okay. that's okay. what makes good. me excited. You yeah. just okay. never know, because okay. right. they did make that movie. In well, because people will come up to me and Dante, like when we do a panel, and they're like, what do you think of the movie, right? And neither of us have seen it. Mm-hmm. So we're like, uh, I don't know, we haven't really seen it. People are like, don't see it. It's not <laughs> okay. I, mean, I saw it opening weekend, and I was very disappointed. Because okay. it... That story is. Does so it have a different feel? Is it just totally different? It's like, just, it's just whitewashing. Yeah, yeah. They mispronounce the character's yeah. name. Okay. The martial arts does not look like martial arts. I heard it looks this like one's gonna have like dancing. actual Asians in it and not. Okay. It was slow. I mean, slow. Yeah, like, yeah. really. Slow. Did they try and tell the whole story in like yeah. two hours? Yeah. yeah. Like whole okay. season one. Yeah. Okay. It was. And that's what I, uh, I like about Avatar is it's a slow build, and that's what's so fun about that yeah. show is it just keeps building and the characters you just you know you hate them at first and then you start to love them you know it's just it's a fun show okay yay right. <laughs> so we're excited though yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. i'm very excited okay, okay. yeah i mean anytime uh somebody said this perfect is one time is they're like you know all, especially nowadays with all the comic book stuff coming out and everything you get we lose sight of like when i was a kid i never thought that i would get an avengers movie or all sure. this stuff, and it's like, we get so critical, and it's like, man, they're making stuff that we never thought we would even see, see. in our lifetime, so yeah. it's, I try to stay more positive in that aspect. Good for you, of, good. You know? yeah. And you know, you guys are putting your heart and soul yeah, into, yeah. you know, these Nobody things for us. Nobody wants to make us. a bad movie, you no, know what I mean? I get that. <laughs> not, no one wants to make a bad movie. Yeah, and it's, you know, you never know, like how you were saying with Freaks and Geeks, like you never know what went through the studio of this right. person got sick, or this right. happened, so. Yeah, yeah. I, I try to keep that in mind just sometimes, like, oh, you get a little... I wish everyone was like you. That's lovely. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> um, how, uh, so, how was it, the Brady Bunch? I, like, awesome. Was, yeah? Super cool. Like, <laughs> best experience ever. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that movie, um, and I, I did that when I was, I think I did the first one when I was 11, and maybe the second one when I was 12. Um, and I had already been acting for a really long time, um, as long as you can when you're 11 or 12. Um, but uh, that movie is really what opened so many doors for me and everything else. Um, and it was fun. I mean, the costumes and like we had to learn how to sing and dance and like all that stuff. It's just like that whole experience is like nothing but pure joy. And, you know, there's a lot of just like that same core eight or six people. Um, yeah, and it's just a fun thing. Like when Wyatt and I booked that, Paramount sent over dating myself now VHS tapes you know like oh. sky high of all the episodes and everything um, 
And so to watch those and then, you know, a month or two later to go onto the set and everything was like perfect, like it was like exactly as yeah. it was, you know, it was a total trip. <laughs> so it's really, I mean, that whole, yeah, it was just a really like fun time. Yeah, being a part of something that for, big. For sure. <laughs> and then, you know, they, they like flew us all to Europe to promote it. And like, I mean, we had a really good, fun time. That's funny you bring that up. I didn't even think about that. The promotion of it oh, yeah. must have been huge. Oh, it's so fun. Yeah. It's so all that is like, that's a really like good time of life for sure. Mm. Really fun. That's cool. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you about the Dragon pilot that you were just Oh, yeah. On. Okay. Yeah. How's... I, you're the first person that's even mentioned that you know that that exists. I don't know. Oh. Did, is it, did, are people watching that? Well, that's what's like okay. the most current thing that you've been yeah, working yeah, yeah, on. Yeah. So I want to know um, how that. I just like I want to do more anime. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I have I know someone um, you know, through our agency, and she directs a lot of anime. And I ran into her in a in a dry cleaner like parking lot. And I was like, "What? What are you doing?" And she's like, "Oh, I'm I'm on lunch break. I'm directing this anime." And I like accosted her and I was like I want to do anime like, um, so she she brought me in for that and I there was one other one um, wow because it wasn't that long ago is it out yet what, what other anime have I done anything no um, there's like something else anyway I did that but there's something else but um I do not have it in okay, my books it's not out. it might not be out yet um but a ninja just walked in. I love Comic Con. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so so that was just like me begging her to do some anime, and it's just like a couple lines of like on a couple uh, episodes of one character. Um, but yeah, that's my what I want to do more of, and that's a weird um, kind of facet of the industry because most of that is done in Dallas um, through this company called Funimation. So there's stuff starting to kind of trickle through LA. Uh, Net, which is basically because of Netflix. Netflix has bought a lot of anime because I think Netflix's whole plan is to just like diversify and own everything. I mean, it's a smart and, business plan. And it's a right, it's a totally smart business plan. And anime is a huge market, like huge. Mm -hmm. So I think they just went, well, we'll do some anime. So now there's some anime trickling into Los Angeles. Um, so hopefully I'll get to do more of that. That'll be just, fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that is. Uh, I've read a lot that a lot of people are just going to Netflix and not going to the big, uh, yep. you know. They've got the money, so more power to them. And yeah. they're very open to trying new things, which yeah. is a lot of fun. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, with voice acting, and I mean, uh, for everybody it's a little bit different, but you starting in acting is different, but how of anybody that wanted to be a voice actor and doing what you're doing, do you have any like words of advice or any, like? I mean, so, okay, so this is gonna be like so not what people wanna hear. Um, so there's a website called, okay, so there's a, a voice actor um, named Dee Bradley Baker, who is the best voice actor, I, every top voice actor will tell you this is like the best voice actor that exists. He can do creatures, he can do regular voices, he's amazing. So he compiled this website called I want to be a voice actor.com and it literally I send everyone there. It has like every question in depth focus like where to start, how to begin, all these things, what to do with your money, like all everything. Oh, wow. um, it's it's truly amazing and there's no like bells and whistles. Like it is text, it is reading. It's awesome. So I send people there I want to be a voice actor.com. Um, but then everything else is just like take an acting class, you know, because it is acting. And then, um, you know, if you if there's a voice that you hear that sounds really interesting to you, work on it, try and emulate it. Um, and then from there, you know, it just goes into, you make a demo, you submit it to agents and all that stuff. But now there are different websites. Um, I think there's one called Voices123. There's a few where you can audition um, for non-union stuff. Uh, just kind of all across the country. I think most of it is um, commercial voice acting as far as just like, you know, uh, selling cars or selling a phone plan or whatever it is. Um, being the voice on a mattress commercial, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but then, but as far as animation, yeah, most of that um, goes through SAG. And so you just like, you get an agent and you start going. Um, but yeah, just, 
it's fun. So I encourage everybody yeah. to go for it. Uh, but it's hard because it's like there's never like one way to just to do it, right? No, it's um, definitely. But it's always I always say start fundamentally in acting because that's what it is. Like anybody can kind of read words and read words in a funny voice, but you have to make that person sound like they're dying or like that they're crying or they're happy or sad. Or there's a lot of just you. Have, there's stuff with voice acting, and I did something the other day. Um, a video, a new video game that's coming out called uh, uh, Hero Eight or something. It's a phone phone game, like an anime kind of thing. Um, and they were really, you know, sometimes there'll be three words, and you have to say that fifty different ways. And sometimes you're like, guys, like there's no other way that I can say this. Like I'm excited, or I'm I'm excited, or oh I'm excited. You know, there's different sort of levels, but it's like you have to be able to give variety and mm -hmm. that's where I think the acting comes in is to know how to kind of do that. No, oh, awesome. <laughs> that no. makes sense. No, I like it uh, because yeah. I've got to interview a couple of different people and it's it's really fun to hear each person's point of view. Yeah. Like uh, Everybody's a different take. Yeah, somebody yeah. was like, stop talking and I was like, what do you mean? He was like, listen. Mm -hmm. He's all, I would listen to other people's yeah. Sound and he's like, I would go home and I would just try to mimic it and yep. I would play it over and over in my head and I was like, never even thought about that. He's like, this voice was my grandpa yelling at me. Totally. This voice was my mom, you know, when she was sad or something. You're like, I I don't think of that and so it's really fun totally. to hear you guys. Yeah, like, yeah. That person had a better answer than me. Yeah. No. Well, no. <laughs> no I'm just, that's I like to, uh, that's yeah. what I was just, you know. No, no. Now you're right. making me feel. No, wrong. no, no. So I have some Hardly Heroes questions okay. that we like to ask our guests before okay. we get to um, uh, fans' questions. Okay. So first off, do you have a favorite superhero and villain? God. It, it makes us know a little I, bit you more know, about okay, you. I really actually like Batman. I know that's like standard, but it's like he's the only um, superhero that doesn't, he doesn't have powers. He's just like mentally ill. So I like that, right? Like it's cool. Like he's not he he's just like I'm a little twisted in my brain and I'm gonna go do this, right? I like that. So uh Batman and then villain. Um God, there's so many good ones, right? Um no, I you know, I actually kinda like I was Harley I am going with oh. Batman on this one, but like Harley oh. Quinn's like really that's right? phenomenal. Like that's, that's another a really good one. Yeah, so like I don't always think of her as a villain because it's not like she's, I, she's not so cut and dry with her, which I mm -hmm. also like. Yeah. Well that's I like So she's I like a people who are mentally character. disturbed, so that's what that's all about. No, that's okay. definitely and my great. dating history. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um do you uh, uh do you have a superpower that you would want? What would be your superpower? Invis you? Invisibility, right? Like that's mm -hmm. cool. Like, okay. Because I'm I'm like a lurker. Like I want to know what you're doing when I'm not there. Like what's going on, right? I mean, people say flying. Like it'd be cool oh, yeah, to not have to like sit on a plane for twelve hours and just like now I'm in Vietnam or whatever. Yeah. But like straight go straight to Vietnam, huh? I love Vietnam. Vietnam's oh, I'm just caught oh, off guard. Yeah, Vietnam's the best. Like usually um, you hear people that are like, oh, Rome, Paris. No, like, no I want to go to Vietnam. Vietnam and New Zealand. No, Southeast Asia. That's like where it's at. Yeah, it's cheap. I want to go to New Zealand. Food's good. New Zealand's the best country on earth. Yeah. Yeah. If I found out I was dying tomorrow, I'd get on a plane and go to New Zealand. I want to go to Norway. Norway's beautiful. It's You've been? Expensive. No, but I've seen oh. pictures. I love travel. So, oh, yeah. like, so do I. I just like sit online and scroll and yeah. look at places. We have some listeners in Norway that are like big fans, and they're like, "You need to come out here." And I'm like, "Oh no, like, I definitely yeah, do okay. that." Yeah. yeah. So, um, oh, okay. So that was your superpower. Now, this is by far my favorite question. Okay, not the McDonald's question. No, no, no. That was just specifically for okay. you. And by the way, that was phenomenal. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, is if there was a zombie apocalypse. Okay. What would your weapon be, but no gun? So like one of the right, because you want to not be, uh, you want to be far away from. The, can I have? Can I have like a grenade? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah, because so, I don't want to be up close, right? Because like you get bitten and like. I get, but it's kind of loud. But how many grenades do you have? Just like a sleeve full of them. And you're like strapped to grenades, right? Yeah. And that's risky. <laughs> what if they pull? They grab no, at you right, and pull right, a pin. You're, right, you're, you're, right, you're right. You're right. That's bad. No, that's bad. Uh, uh, we've had some really fun ones. Uh, like a flamethrower. Oh, now 
Yeah. Yeah. I do. That was actually that was That's really good, good, right? Yeah, I had uh, Beverly Washburn. She was in Old Yeller. Okay. And she was like the sweetest. I was okay. like, hey, what would be your superpower? And she was like, I would get every animal a home that didn't have a home. So I'm like dying, right? And then I'm like, I don't want to ask her this question. Yeah, so yeah, I asked her this question. I'm like, hey, what would be your weapon of choice? She's like, I'd have ice cream cones and I would smash it in their faces and it would. I love her. Yeah, so, she's I like so her cute. in my pocket. Exactly. <laughs> so thank you so much for answering those thank questions. You. That was super fun. Yes. Yeah. So that was awesome. I wanted to open it up. It's like one of the best panels I've done. Yeah. Like that was you yeah, that was good. That was yeah. really good. I was I'm surprised. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I uh, got two questions. Okay. One, uh, I always felt like Hey Arnold was very mature for its time, like yeah. it's writing quarterly, because yeah. uh, very early for Nickelodeon. Like, yeah. how did it feel that it was that mature? And second question, you voiced the Ty Lee in Avatar, and how did it feel like Ty Lee was friendly, but kind of invincible with her martial arts and how she's able to, like, you know, do the pressure points, which yeah. that's kind of scary. And I kind of wonder, would that work on a zombie? <laughs> <laughs> no, because zombies kind of move too fast, right? So like, well, I don't know. Are we talking about 28 days later zombies? Yeah, later right, days? there's different right. zombies. Yeah. Okay. But for, no, because, I mean, a zombie, you have to cut their head off, right? Like, that's kind of it. Um, and as far as, like, Hey Arnold, yeah, I mean, that was an interesting show. Like, there's a Vietnam Christmas episode, right, that, like, teaches about the Vietnam War. And, like, Arnold gets mugged in an episode, and, like, there's characters that are living in poverty secretly and stuff. So I, yeah, it's it's pretty cool in that there's these really adult themes, um, but also things that kids deal with, you mm, know? At that um, age. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's real life, um, as opposed to just bells and whistles and sparkles and whatever, which has a place too. Um, but yeah, it's a really uh, heartfelt show, and I think that's why it resonates with people so much. Like, people will come up and, act deeply affected by that show uh, which is really cool um, and that's why it was so cool to come back last year and do the jungle movie oh, yeah. and kind of give all those people resolution because I didn't realize like so many people were scarred that they never got you know the answer of like where are Arnold's parents yeah. and all this thing um, yeah so it was really it was done really well and I would say if it was done poorly I was so proud of that movie um, because we did have the original creators and writers and stuff uh, and it felt the same. You know, so many times when they bring something back, it feels totally different, or it's like, why? This doesn't need to happen. But with Arnold, there was a, it ended on a cliffhanger, the whole series. And so it kind of needed to be answered, and it was answered in like a really lovely way, and the movie looks beautiful. And yeah, did they just call you out of the blue and say, hey, we're going to make Kind of. I am friends with the creator, so I knew that it was kind of in the works. Uh, but it had been in the works for a couple of years, and we were like, is it going to happen? Is it going to happen? And then, and then it did. And yeah, so that was fun, too. Yeah, and that was really – and then we got to go to New York Comic Con last year and, like, promote it, and that was fun. So it's just, again, hanging out with people that, that you – that's big. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I saw very little of it because I was kind of working well, all the yeah, time, but it was like, it's big. Because I got to go to Stan Lee's Comic Con in How LA awesome? last year. Dude, that was <laughs> yeah. insane. Same. Yeah. It was just so many people. Insane. We ended up like get to share a booth. We were next to like the Black Eyed Peas and stuff. But <laughs> the, yeah. the cosplay, <laughs> the cosplay was just outrageous. Out of this world. Yeah, that's my favorite part of shows like that is people's cosplay that is just like I, bananas. I lost my mind. I saw a guy dressed as Barf. I don't know if you know Spaceballs. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I tr like I literally was like, oh my gosh, and the guy just kind of right. laughed. I was like, that's oh. Right. That's like, right. Yeah, because it's stuff that's really out of the box too. Like, and that's it's what not I like. your basic. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's real raw. Have you seen anybody dress as one of your? Oh yeah, yeah. that's my favorite. That's that. really cool. That's yeah. 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 It's always Tylee. Oh it's yeah. Tylee. Yeah, yeah. That's so much. She fun. was cool. And she sometimes they'll cool come, too. like, the whole Fire Nation will come. You know, oh. or like, oh, I've seen 10 people deep, all dressed as all the. Oh, yeah. Oh, Joe, love taking Yeah, it's of really those. cool stuff. So cool. Yeah, it's pretty sick. It's nice. Yeah. Um, I have three questions, but I'm going to go really fast. All right, let's do uh, it. The first one is Are you returning for Clone Wars Season 7? Uh, not to my knowledge. Okay. Yeah. Uh, second oh, question. I'm probably not even supposed to say that, but That's yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> second question. Um, it's something that we didn't talk about. You were in Star Trek Generations. Yeah. Um, playing um, Captain Picard's kid. What was that yeah. experience like? That was awesome um, because I was a huge...
huge like Trekkie, which is weird as like a 10 year old. Um, but my family every Friday night or whenever it was on, um, we would watch Star Trek Next Generation. Um, so that was like kind of a dream come true. And they like, which is, it's funny because in movies it's, they spend so much money and it's like this, uh, but they custom made us these amazing mm -hmm. outfits. And then they changed that whole dream sequence and we had to come back and reshoot the whole thing. Um, so it was like an extra, so I kind of, kind of got to do it twice, which was really fun. Um, yeah, and just really cool. And Patrick Stewart's like the most lovely human being. Too. Yeah. I yeah. killed Yeah, him. he's like That's the right. most, and I saw him years later and he's still the most lovely human, like he's lovely. Yeah. Oh, I have. Do keep in touch with Wait, do you have a third question? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're good. You he tell him. You're like, so hey, you're so much side eye. He wasn't going to say it, but yeah. he was like. Yeah. Yeah. I had one right. more. <laughs> um, so, my third question is uh, about the, the young ones TV show that you yeah. mentioned. Did yeah. you know anything about what the story was going to be about and what your involvement was going to be? I mean, I think, really it, I think it was going to be those four characters, from mm -hmm. what I know. Um, I don't know too much beyond that, uh, but I think, like I said, it was going to be geared more toward younger kids because Clone Wars is a little older. Um, yeah, so I'm bummed. So I'm always hoping people are always saying that worked on the show. They're like, well, that was the most popular arc, and then that was you never know. And I'm just like, oh, that would be amazing. But um, yeah, it was a cool little arc that they did because they did like explain the lightsabers and things like that. So I think there might have been more just kind of origin stories about how you become a Jedi. Because all the Jedis we meet are like, they're already in their 20s, right? But how do you kind of start as a child and recognize your talent? And yeah, so it's an, it's an interesting thing. And I think would be really popular with kids because they can obviously relate to some of their own age more. Um, but I don't know, right, Disney? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now you can ask. Okay, all right. all right. So... I mean, you were on like Life with Louie. Yeah. Oh, I, I saw love that. that. Yeah. Um, and then you, you did a lot of like. Rugrats. You guys do. You guys go deep. We try. Oh man. Yeah. Okay. Nickelodeon was my life growing up. It was crazy. Okay. Um, but with all these different recurring like just um, just your characters. Yeah. Do you meet any really good like friends, celebrities that you still keep in touch with today? Except Rogan. I mean, and, like, everybody's everybody's cool, but it's like you know, like to no. keep in touch. Oh, you're, you're like, like a I best friend know. or anything like that. No, no, I do not have any celebrity I'm best friends. I wish I'm I trying did. to be your best friend. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I thought the McDonald's question brought us closer. <laughs> it did. Yeah. It did. You're the only person that's uh, yeah. But really, watch watch those commercials online because it's a trip. You're like, meatballs, like McDonald's, like what are you thinking? Like it's weird. That's so weird. Yeah, it's super weird. Yeah. <laughs> you were starting like eight months when you were, when you first did your first commercial, right? Yeah. Wow. Wow. You guys are. Where, where do you <laughs> get? That's not even online anymore. I'm telling you, we dig deep here yeah. okay. uh, for the podcast. Yeah, guys. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, did anybody have any other questions? No. No. All right. No. Sweet. I mean, yeah, we this still got great. another like five minutes up to you. So. Are you gonna make me sit in this chair? Uh, yeah, I was actually hoping you were gonna interview me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any questions you would like to ask? I, me? What's this purple wristband about? Oh, this is like the yeah. yeah. yeah it's oh, for, uh, there's good. different color wristbands. Like they got yellow. Yeah, okay, ours okay. is for like uh, the staff that's working. Fancy. Yeah. Uh, you are lucky. You don't, don't have, have to have wear one. Yeah, yeah, I know. You're so fancy. They're like, oh no, no, no. no, 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 no. Yeah, well, Olivia's here. Part. Part C. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> I was wondering if we were going to try to talk to them and see if we could take one of those. Aren't they cute? Which one would you pick? They're so weird. Oh, no. no Mine's no. far left. Which is Scotland, right? Yeah. So it's like Scotland. I don't know what. Is that Japan? Japan, it's like, yeah. Some Ethiopian something, maybe Native American, Switzerland, <laughs> Mexico, no. America? What is that? I don't know. I don't know. Dutch. Uh -huh. He's got like a little trapper hat on, and then some sort of maybe like Middle Eastern something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So how many cons have you done now? Yeah. Not that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did they mainly ask you about? The Brady Bunch or Avatar. Star Wars? Avatar. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to like when I talked no, to you before. You were like, I don't know no, all about no, the No, no. I mean, I do. <laughs> so you just calm but it's down. Like sometimes yeah. there was a guy who was here earlier with like a book. No, no. You had the book. Yeah, I had a you book. had the book. Right. No, it was a guy dressed as Zelda, and he had the DVD set of it. And he 
started talking to me about the graphic novels, though. Uh, and I was like, I don't know anything about the graphic novels. And he was going real deep with some character names I'd never heard before. <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, but I don't know, you know. And I, and I don't want to, like, break anybody's heart, you know. Yeah. They're super into it. And I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about, you know. Because um, I think it's awesome. I'm oh, super yeah. into it. Uh, but yeah, sometimes if they go real deep, I'm just like, and I, Dante, because I've done a lot of cons with him, he's really good on the panel, and he's, you know, he's so cool. You did um, really well. Thank you. Um, but he's just super cool, and he's very, like, into Avatar and whatever, um, and I'll say to him, like, oh, I never want to do a panel without you about Avatar, because you're so into it, you know, and he's like, I don't know what I'm talking about. Like, I just, you know, I'm just bullshit and whatever. Because <laughs> um, I'm sitting there going, like, oh, yeah, Dante, answer this one, you know. Yeah. And he's just he's just very smooth. Um, yeah, funny. yeah, but it's, you know, but it's such a great show. And yeah. so it's, like, an honor to be a part of it, but I want to, like, make everybody, I don't want people to feel bad that I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, you know, you're yeah. like, oh, I get it. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like if someone was, like, isn't it, this is my favorite show? It's so amazing. It's whatever. And you're like, I, yeah, it's okay. Whatever. Yeah. And you're like, oh, so I don't, you know. Yeah. Actually, one more. Um, for Legend of Korra, did they ever ask you to come on there? No. No? That would have no. been like, perfect. You already had the whole line. No. That would have been. I know, That would have right? been nice. Yeah. I can't believe I forgot my DVD set. I know. I totally have a whole season. Did you, you I, yeah, this guy had the brand the new books. Blu-ray. Oh, I don't he, have He, like, those. unwrapped it. I don't have all the things. I was like, oh, I have okay. the DVD set. I didn't even think about it. I know. I got it the Well, I got up at God. 5 this morning to get here, so. Oh, you didn't think of everything at five in the morning? No, you know, it's just I'm trying to get here, make sure I look decent. You look yeah. beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank and, you. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Yeah.